Hello and welcome back to the bed guys. My name's Ben, bringing you another World of Tanks Xbox replay. So what we've got for you today is a bit of an old one in my Amex 1390. This is the tier 8 French light tank. And I saved this one quite a while ago and hadn't had a chance to uh, to put it up, so it's been nice to uh, nice to finally get it up here. And I'm not sure if you can even... Uh, so this is a spot I kind of just decided to drive up here randomly. Um, I didn't really know if you could actually get along, but I thought I'd just check it out. I didn't really have a um, another spot I wanted to go for with... Um, with a light tank on this map, so I thought I'd go up here and, and kind of see what happens. And we all see see kind of how that pans out as it goes on. Now the 1390 is a tank I've I've long since unlocked the, the bat chat and actually decided to keep the 1390. Not used it so much because I moved my crew onto my bat chat, so I needed to retrain a whole new crew for it and trying to drive a tier 8 light tank without six cents is not much fun. So I haven't used it for a while. But I don't think I'm going to sell it anytime soon. I really, really love this tank. There was just something about it that, that really did it for me. You can see uh, it's getting a bit fiddly here. But I think, uh, I'm pretty sure you can still do this. I remember trying to do it in another tank since. And, um, and failing. But, uh, but this one I think I do manage to eventually, there you go, find the line and get it up there. But yeah, I found, um, I mean, compared to the others on the 13th, the, so the AMX 12T on this line wasn't really a fan of. That's the, uh, what, the tier 6 after the ELC. ELC is a great tank, but a much, much different tank to, to the rest of the line. The 12T I didn't really enjoy very much. The, the poor mobility wasn't really balanced out by the, by the good, the effectiveness of the gun. Um. But the 1375 was a bit of an improvement on that, and I think the 1390 is another great improvement on that. And I, I really love it. It's got a very powerful gun. When you've got the top gun on this, you can dish out a very serious amount of damage with those six shots, as you'll see later on in this round. And it's also got much better maneuverability than um, than some of those earlier ones in the line. It's not as maneuverable as as a Chaffee or something like that, but um, but it does the job pretty well, considering the gun. Um, the turret rotation is not too bad compared to some of the ones on this line. It can hold its own pretty well. So there we go. I've managed to get up to this um, this kind of weird spot. And you can tell it's also got excellent camo, this tank. And you can kind of tell that by the fact that I'm just sitting up here. I've, I'm kind of in a bush, but I don't think I'm really... I think when I pull back like that, I might be getting the bush cover when I'm sitting here. Pretty sure I won't be getting anything from that. Because I'm kind of poking half out of it. But, um... But I do have these trees in between me and the enemy, so, um, and there we go, I'm not even spotted after firing three shots into that guy. And because I'm shooting down on these guys as well, it's giving me a, a bit of a better chance to pen, or maybe not for, um, not for those two. But certainly that first guy, often when you're shooting down on tanks, it can make it a lot easier to pen their armor, because, um, they're not really dying to be shot from the top. So there we go, 35 second or so reload for the uh, for the 90 millimeter on this. And it feels like a long time after uh, the previous guns in this line are generally uh, quite a lot quicker and lower damage, but this is pretty good preparation for when you uh, when you unlock the bat chat and you're going to be you're going to be enjoying those those long reloads quite quite often. Since I'm just about managing to keep myself balanced on there, nearly fell off. Side pullback, still haven't actually been spotted at all, somehow. These guys must be 100 meters away. 104 meters away, still not spotted. There we go, it finally shows me a side. <laughs> One more shot. No. It's going to be a bit hopeful to go in the Conqueror. And there we go. We've got six damage shots away. We haven't even been spotted, let alone shot at yet. Enemy vehicle 
and it's probably worth saying, I can't remember exactly what the crew was up to at this stage, but I was certainly working towards camo crew skills on this crew, so it no doubt had normal camo, it may well have had one of the other camo bonuses that you can get with crews on the Xbox version of World of Tanks. But um, but 104 meters, emptying a full clip at 104 meters and not getting spotted just seems just seems outrageous, frankly. So um, so the teams are pretty even. All my other teammates from this side have sort of died now, so I'm a little bit cautious of kind of popping up and shooting now. But it looks like we've got a fairly strong force of greens going around to the enemy base on the west side of the map, although they've got a couple of base campers waiting there to, um, to try and shoot them. So here's one of those heavy tanks, is that maybe that, uh, the Centur- oh, the E75, there we go. Yep, so the E75's push around on full health, I actually get spotted for the first time there. Or the first time of any consequence, but they don't seem to notice, so that's fine. Oh, try the shot on Yapet to do, and then very wisely decide to dive out of the way. Don't want to eat one of those, probably would have taken off 400 or so of my health if you had the top gun. So I'm just trying to keep myself away from getting shot by this E75, but see if I can maybe put a couple of shots into him, help out the base. I'm kind of surprised he didn't, oh, this artillery puts a big shell into him there. I'm kind of surprised that that guy didn't, um try and put a shot into me. Normally people are pretty tempted by light tanks, although I suppose people are more tempted by artillery. When people see artillery in this game, they just they just lose all sense of reason and just try and shoot it, no matter what else is around. Light tanks often the same. I think people like the easy damage. Artillery arguably, I mean both things, there are cases when that is the best option. You're taking a dangerous gun out of the game, a light tank that could circle you, or an arty that could, could shotgun you and one shot you. Ooh. Okay, using the maneuverability, get around behind the egg pad there. Very easily take him out. So 39 seconds the full reload time there. Pretty pretty long reload. And I imagine that's uh, this is going to be with a gun rammer as well, and also with uh, coffee or whatever the uh, the French premium one is. You can see the uh, the accuracy on the move there. Not very good. You can't mount vert stabs either to this. So. Um, that's never something you're going to really use too much. And again, though, that is also going to be good practice for the bat chat, because the bat chat, although it can mount um, vert stabs, is pretty pretty crappy at shooting on the move. And so you're generally, with this tank you're, and the bat chat, although you're not really sniping from super distance, but you're either going to be like hidden, hidden and sniping, or you're going to be um, circling people and getting right up close before you before you start firing shots. So I'm surprised this, there we go. Left myself pretty exposed there, but um, but we should be able to finish this guy up pretty comfortably. There we go. He's down. So it's actually down to um, one versus five now. The enemy team killed all of my team who were attacking over on the, on the uh, western flank. And have left me to try and mop up the pieces. But we're on four kills. We've done a respectable amount of damage. We've got quite a lot of health left. Probably could have managed to take down the E75 without eating a shot, but um, but you can't do everything right. So my thinking here was I don't really know where any of the enemy are. The last two I've seen have been that Jagdpanther 2 and the E75, which are now both dead. I know they had some base campers, and I know that they knew that I was defending the spawn a minute ago, so it felt the obvious route for me to take would have been up the middle, because that's kind of where I was heading anyway, so once I was unspotted I started to turn around, head up this way and see if I could pop in and flank people, driving into a very carefully camouflaged uh, dead heavy tank there. And unfortunately someone's actually come around and started capping, so we're going to go back. Although it does, it feels like we're fighting a bit of a lost cause, but you might as well do what you can. Absolute carnage in this, uh, this section of the map.
And even just watching this replay just really makes me want to play this tank again. It was, it was as close to the as close to the bat chat I think as this line gets, other than the uh, the bat chat itself, the tier ten. Okay, we've got an enemy Chiri. We're coming out, coming out head on. So, I, what are we going to go for? <laughs> Trying to mull over the uh, best course of action here. We've still got 40 seconds till we can cap. We go get ourselves unspotted, and we're going to move around, be a bit more sensible, try and pop up and surprise him. So really, all we need to do is get close to him, and then we can circle him and avoid him shooting us. We're coming at him from distance, it gives him a lot more time to try and get one shot in. Like that E75 did, I should have popped up and been a lot closer. There we go, caught the Chiri napping. Is he going to manage to get a shot in? Five, two, three. Four, and it's going to take the full clip, there we go. So we take out the full health Chiri, and we've got an Amex 50 120 shooting as we've got a Borsig. On very little health over there shooting at us and just trying to uh, wiggle my tank about make it hard for them to hit me oh just missed the shot must have been from the from the boss there and we reload again with only 11 shots remaining now keep in mind <laughs> have to uh, readjust my my line around that corner or you just go flying into the water that's going to very easily be done so again, there wasn't really any other route to go. The AMX was blocking the uh, sort of G6 area up through the middle. The Borsig was on the H2 sort of side. So I decided to go around here and kind of flank again. I think, I guess maybe an alternative option would have been trying to get back across the, the cap, maybe, if I could have dodged shots or got not got spotted by the Borsig. Managed to get up close to the Borsig. I probably could have taken him out in a hit or two. Uh, the Amex is going to be a bit of a bit of a tougher deal. There's only four of them left now, and I got five kills. And unfortunately, one of them's jumped on the cap again. So I can, I can only assume that must have been the Amex. I think is the only one that really could have got there in time. I don't think the Borsig could have got down there in time. They're not too too nippy despite their crappy armor. So we decided to go for the RT while we're here. Unfortunately fluff the first snapshot then he gets all the way away. And I start heading back and my kind of decision here which turns out to be a, probably a poor one was there was a minute left to cap. I decided I thought well I mean this is probably a lost battle anyway just by my ammo. So I might as well take out the artillery. I can probably head back and break the cap once more with 40 seconds left. Oh, fluff another shot. Not useful when you've uh, very low on ammo. And one into the tracks. And there we go. End up being a big hit from the artillery. Get tracked. Already used my repair kit. And just to make things worse, someone else gets on the cap and makes it too. Without the tracking shot, um, without the second person, maybe, just maybe, I could have made it back. But, um, but not anymore. Not with the tracking, not with the two people on there. But a very good round indeed, anyway. Very, very pleased with that. Not just for the score, but I just thought that was a really fun battle. And to be, to give the enemy a real, a real run for their money when you're. 6-1, 5-1 down against just one light tank. I felt that was um, that was worth watching. So that was an ace tank and 99%. Defender medal, top gun, 3,500 damage and 5,500 XP with a couple of ops as well. And if we just have a look at the in-depth stats, we actually managed to get 1,800 base XP, which is a very nice amount of base XP for a tier 8 tank. But unfortunately, it wasn't quite enough to win the battle today. So you go, I hope you enjoyed that replay everyone, I certainly enjoyed doing a commentary for that and it's one that I've been looking forward to putting up for quite a while. So let me know what you thought about it in the comments, if you tried out this tank, uh, well, how do you think compares to the others in the line, what's your favourite, your least favourite, I'd be interested to hear that. Nice one, well thanks for watching, if you enjoyed the video please consider hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel. Weatherbeard guys, my name's Ben and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.